Okay, so now I'm in my JS bin and I'm going to talk about how the each function works and how we can build our own each function in more detail. So last time we just kind of looked up the each function here and you know you could see how the definition was written uh, if you wanted to. Uh, so we're going to do exactly that. We're going to try to build our own definition function. And with this exercise you should be able to see at the end of it kind of like how um, backbone and underscore, well underscore works behind the scenes. Because if I were to do something like, let's go back to the main page of underscore here. And if I were to just copy and paste this, this is all nice, you know, like I could just, you know, copy and paste this. It runs great, one, two, three. Um, and that's great until, you know, you come along here and you do something else like console log and then you think okay it's gonna console log one two three and instead you get whoa what is all this you get zero and two and stuff seems like it's out of order and what is this right like because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes you wouldn't know like why you're getting all this extra information here so let's come back to this I'm going to turn this off here by commenting it out and then we can take a look at this. And this is important, especially if you're a newbie or you're trying to still learn programming with JavaScript. Um, you need to know kind of how to write these functions behind the scenes because if you don't know what's going on behind the scenes and you're just copying and pasting stuff, one day you'll hit an error and you'll have no idea like how to debug it, which sucks. And I've been there myself and uh, you know, what I really think now is that you should avoid copy and paste um, for all purposes. Like if you're, you know, brand new and you're learning JavaScript, that's one thing to like copy and paste. But if you want to get more professional, it's really, it's on you before you start copying and pasting different libraries. Uh, it's on you to kind of know, like, how does it really work behind the scenes? Even if you have like a general understanding of it, that's more than just copying and pasting blindly and then hoping that stuff works. So I'm going to create my um, own array here, kind of like last time. And I'm going to pass in some numbers, 369 or 368. And I'm also going to create an object. And I'm going to call it, um, well, I'm just going to pass in regular objects, VJ, regular properties, a name, age, 12, and website. And we'll just say google.com because everybody knows that's my website. Just kidding. All right, so now that I've got this array and I've got this object, what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to do something like the each method. I want to go through every single index in my array or every single property in my object and console log them out. As it stands, if I were to use that method here, you know, like we saw, Again, I'll do it just for demonstration purposes. Var, I'm just going to use my array, and I'm just going to say console log, and I'm going to do it again with my object. I'm just going to run these, get all this crazy information when all I really wanted was I wanted to just do the index. I just wanted the index, and or I mean I'm sorry, I just wanted the value at the index and I just wanted the value at the property. So how do I modify this? Well, let's clear this out and let's take out these. And instead, I'm going to write my own each function. So I'm going to pass in, um, we'll call it, um, we'll just say any for now. And that would be anything like an array or an object. So, and then we're going to pass in um, a function. And we'll keep it simple for now. And in JavaScript, remember, you can pass in functions. So what I want to do first is, the first thing I want to do with this each function is I want to know, like, well, what is my any? Is it an array or is it an object? And in JavaScript, we have a convenience function that we can use from our array object. And if you're not familiar with this, if you were to say, if you were to look up array is array method, in JavaScript, you would get um, a link on Google for the array. If you're not familiar with this, this is basically 
just the long and short of it is that in JavaScript 3, everything inherits from objects. So arrays are objects too. So arrays also, like objects, have built-in functions. And isArray will tell you if an object is an array. So uh, this is the Mozilla Developer Network. I really like this website. They have a lot of great examples. Some of the examples are actually a little bit over the top. And you know that can be kind of confusing for a brand new developer, uh, but you know, like I said, programming is one of those things where you just have to persist and really learn. Um, you know the lingo. I think you know a lot of like the higher end developers in this field love to talk um, almost esoterically, and um, you know uh, it's all about um, you know making elegant code and you know very less is more. Uh, but sometimes you lose stuff by doing less is more too often because you know people who are trying to learn at the bottom have no idea what you're talking about. So, like I said, it's just persist. But in any case, so uh, you know this array is array method is available to us in regular JavaScript. So I'm going to use it, and if my object is an array, so I'm going to say if is if is array for my any variable, then I want to go through my array, because I know it's an array now, and I want to go through from zero, initialize my um, my for loop from zero to um, any dot length i less than any dot length and i plus plus. And then I want to apply my function and I'm going to pass in a. Um, I'm going to pass in my any's uh, value. I'm going to pass in the index, and I'm going to pass in any. So that way, later, if I wanted to call um, any of these parameters, I could do something with all three of these parameters. So if you're not really sure what I'm doing here, basically I'm building out a definition function again, kind of like how underscore works. And in my definition function, I'm checking first to see if my first value is an array. Because if it's not, then it must be an object. And that's the way I'm going to build out this definition function. So I'm just going to say object here. Oh, can't type. Um, and if it's an array, well then I want to go through my array. And I want to call whatever function I pass uh, to my array. And I want to put in my arrays value, my array is index, and I also want to pass in the array so I can do something with it. So if I were to call this function down here, and now I'm going to actually use what I want, my array at the top variable, my array value variable, and I want to pass in a function. And we can do this because this is the way, like I've set up my function here, this is my callback function. So in my callback function, I can pass in three parameters, up to three parameters. So if I pass in my first parameter, I'm just going to call this value to keep it more simple for myself, and I'm going to pass in the second parameter, index. Then I want to console log both the value and the index. So we'll go ahead and run this. And you can see here, I got three, which represents my three here, and it's at index zero. And then that would be the first index of my array. And then index one, I have a six, and at index two, I have a nine. So this is great. If I were to take this all out and just look at value, I would get three, six, nine. And that's pretty convenient. Now going back to our beginning example here, why did you know this underscore function here, if I pressed console log, give me everything? Well, if you go back to the definition for each here in our um, development, uh, our well, our development version here, that's what I clicked, of the underscore library, you don't want to click production because you'll just get the minified version, which you can't read. <laughs> so you want to read the development version. And if I were to do a you know command F, I'm on I'm on my Mac, um, and I'm on Safari. Uh, but if you're on Windows, um, just uh, look up Find uh, in your browser, 
And uh, I'm going to type out my, my each. I've already done this so many times, so it's already there by default. But if you look at this definition function here, it's slightly different from what I've written because they have a method that they built their own called is array like. Um, but you can see like they also passed in you know a value an index and an obj for object uh, an array like object so the iterate just means like again remember esoteric uh, you have to learn the lingo iterate just means function like we're passing in a function and context just refers to the scope of your function and then of course the obj is really the object so if you're able to follow along, you can basically see we're doing the same exact thing here. So if I were to say console log, and I were just to pass that here, you know, in the iterate, then it's just going to say, okay, by default, I'm going to console log obj i, which is the value, your index, and I'm going to pass it. I'm going to also console log your context. So that's why when, if I were to also do the same thing, if I were to just say here in my each function, and take out this function and I'm just going to say console log then it's going to say okay ha huh, you want me to console log the value the index and also the context so that's exactly what I'm going to do so let's also turn this off because we don't want to have that going on at the same time so if I run it then I get everything back I get my value I get my index and I get my context which is you know the array so I hope that um, explains things for now. We'll go into how to build this object out or this each function a little bit more with the object.